Good morning. morning. That's much better. Aren't we excited to be here this morning? (laughs) Yeah, there's always one, you know, (laughs) there's always one. But yeah, we are excited. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get up this morning. And uh, uh, how many of you have been to our competition before? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. So you all know how exciting some of these comp- competitive uh, uh, competitions can be in between the two schools. You know that they really have worked hard at uh, achieving and, and studying the, uh, the books and uh, preparing for this, this competition. The so first thing I want to do is introduce myself. I'm Enos Raglan. I am founding president of 100 Black Men of Madison. And in my day job, I am Deputy Mayor for Administration and Finance for the City of Madison. And I'd like to welcome you here this morning to the 23rd Annual African American History Challenge Bowl of the 100 Black Men of Madison. Thank you. First thing I'd like to do is a little housekeeping, and that is to ask you to uh, turn off your cell phones, or as I like to say, put them on stun. You know, so that you do not interrupt or disturb the, uh, the competition. I'd like to also thank the students who have worked so hard, as I said a few minutes ago, to prepare for this competition. I'd like to thank the coaches who have worked with them. I'd like to thank the teachers. And I'd like to thank the parents for their commitment and support of the students for their participation in our history, African American History Challenge Bowl. Today we have, as our judges, we have the Reverend Dr. Dwight Perry, who is on the end, and we have Mr. Wayne Strong, who will be the judges for our competition today. We also have Mr. George Elder, who will be operating the buzzer system, who is down in front, and Mr. Derek Smith, who will be operating the timer uh, to my right. I want to give a special thank you to uh, Dr. Cheatham and the uh, Madison Metropolitan School District, uh, and they'll, they'll have a representative speaking in a, in a few minutes for their long time and continued support of all of our programs, uh, at, but particularly the African American History Challenge Bowl. So I'd like to give them a round of applause, Dr. Cheatham and the school district. I also want to thank the uh, members of the African American History Challenge Bowl Committee, led by Derek Smith, uh, along with uh, other members like Ed Murray, uh, our president, uh, uh, Dr. Rose, and uh, I think George Yelder also was part of that committee as well. So I want to thank them. And uh, all of the, the uh, 100 Black Men members who are here, would you please stand? Thank you. Thank you. I think we are about 45 members strong, um, but all of them couldn't be here today, and some will be coming a little bit later. But uh, we are pleased to have served the Madison area community for more than 20 years, uh, and serving our youth for more than 20 years. I want to, uh, at this point, uh, talk about the rules, because we have a competition going on, and uh, you need to know how it goes. The youth. Uh, know who are, are competing, but uh, for those of you, it's your first time, or for parents and other folks. Number one, we want you to remain silent. You can applaud, but no comments. Some of you have been here, you may know the answer or whatever, so uh, your voice travels, and we may have to disqualify someone if we hear a comment from the audience, and we would not want uh, you to interfere or uh, force a disqualification of a particular question. Uh, in the competition. So please maintain your silence, no comments, but do applaud the, the, the youth and, the, and their uh, efforts. The rules of the competition, and I go through these to make sure that everyone understands um, uh, the competition and uh, what we expect. There will be two teams that will compete head to head. Uh, okay, for the first round, we have 12 teams. The second round, we have six teams. Third round, the three teams with the highest scoring uh, plus the losing team from the second round. 
And then the fourth round is a championship round, and that will be the final two remaining teams. Each preliminary round will consist of 10 questions or 10 minutes, whichever comes first. Each correct answer is worth five points, and the questions may require two or even three answers to earn points for a correct answer. The moderator will read each question in full unless a team buzzes in before the question is completed. The first team to buzz in will be given the opportunity to answer the question. If a team buzzes in before the question is completed, the moderator will stop reading the question and ask that team for its answer within 10 seconds. If the team response is incorrect, the question will be read in full by the moderator and the other team will be given 10 seconds to answer the question. If the team buzzes in after the question is completed, they will have 10 seconds to consult with their fellow team member before the moderator requests an answer. If the moderator has questions regarding a team response, the judges will determine if the response is correct. And the judges' decisions are final. Let me repeat that. Whether you agree or not, the judges' decisions are final. The team with the most points at the end of the round will compete for the next round. If the score is tied at the end of the round, a tiebreaker question will be asked, and the first team to answer the question correctly will be declared the winner. The final championship round rules are as such. 20 questions will be asked in the final round. There is no time limit in the final round. Questions may require two or even three answers to earn points for a correct answer. 10 second rule for each question will still apply. Judges' rulings are still final. The team with the most points at the end of the final round will be declared the winner. If the score is tied at the end of the final round, a tiebreaker question will be asked and the first team to answer that question correctly will be declared the winner. Are there any questions related to the rules at this particular time? Yes. Um, we can try to make that available for you. Any other questions? All right. No further questions. Those students that are participating, participating will receive medals of merit acknowledging their achievement. Second and third place finishers receive trophies and monetary awards. I think those awards are $50 each. The local first place winner school will host 100 Black Men of Madison Mike McKinney Traveling Trophy. As you may know, Mike McKinney was a distinguished member of 100 Black Men of Madison who passed away. Each member will also receive a trophy, monetary award, and an expense paid trip to represent the Madison chapter at the National 100 Black Men of America Annual National Conference, which I believe this year is in New Orleans. School Spirit Awards are also presented. Schools with the most guests in attendance at the local competition will receive cash awards to be used for pizza parties at their school. The first place for most guests in attendance receive $300. That school will receive $300. The second place and second most guests in attendance receive $200. And third place with the most guests in attendance receive $100. And I believe I didn't mentioned that the second place winners of our competition receive $75, and I believe the first place receive 150 if I'm correct. And those are cash awards to those students. Any questions at this particular point? At this particular time, I'd like to have uh, Bill Greer who is our, a member and secretary of 100 Black Men of Madison to come forth and uh, provide you with a brief history of our uh, national organization and our local organization. Please welcome Bill Greer. Thank you, Enos. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see so many people here this morning. Um, I want to talk to you about our organization and its roots. Um, we are the 100 Black Men of Madison. Our organization was founded in 1963 in New York City by a group of concerned civic leaders 
and businessmen from the African American community. They were concerned about problems that they saw in the African American community. Among those men were David Dinkins, who later became the mayor of New York City, Livingston Wingate, who later became a Supreme Court Justice of New York State, Andrew Hatcher, who was the Deputy Press Secretary for John F. Kennedy, Dr. William Haling, who was a direct decorated Korean War veteran who practiced privately after the war as an obstetrician and gynecologist, and Jackie Robinson, who was a baseball icon and a civil rights leader. These men focused their concern in four primary areas, economic development, health and wellness, academic achievement, and mentoring of young people. They were so successful in their efforts that in a few years, chapters began to spring up in other cities around the country. In 1986, at a national convention, the 100 Black Men of America was incorporated. Our chapter began in 1994, uh, started by founding president Enos Raglan and several other civic-minded African-American men who saw similar problems in Madison and Dane County as the founders had seen in New York City. We have been in operation in the community, committing ourselves to helping young people and their families for 22 years now. In 1995, we became incorporated as a 501c3, a nonprofit organization. Our mission remains to improve the quality of life in the African American community. Toward that end, we work with other like-minded organizations within the community to help young people and their families realize their dreams. This particular event is part of our effort to showcase the academic achievement of our young people in the community. We would ask as we go forward that you show your appreciation of the hard work of these young people and that you encourage them, because today there are no losers in this competition. Amen. We hope now that uh, we will be able in the future to enlist your aid as volunteers, as members of our organization, so that we can continue to fulfill the hopes and dreams of our founding fathers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. At this time, I'd like you to welcome Jamie Sims. Jamie is assistant principal at Black Hawk Middle School, and she will provide a welcome from the Madison Metropolitan School District, or he will provide a welcome from the Madison Metropolitan School District. Uh, uh, one of our, or I should say, our biggest supporter uh, for this competition. Please welcome Jamie Sims. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Jamie Sims. I'm the current assistant principal at Black Hawk Middle School. On behalf of Alex Frayling, Chief of Schools, Dr. Jen Cheatham, our superintendent, we'd like to thank Dr. Rose, Enos Raglan, and the 100 black men of Madison for putting this event on. Um, Alex wanted me to express his deep regrets for not being able to attend today. However, a funeral required him to be out of town. I want to wish uh, the participants today to, to do their best. And on behalf of Black Hawk Middle School, we won it last year. We want to say um, good luck to everyone here. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves, and let's have a great competition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Appreciate that. And I'm going to let you know uh, how you're going to line up for the first round. The first round will feature, uh, we'll have Blackhawk uh, having a bye as uh, last year's winners. Hamilton will compete against Badger Rock. Jefferson will compete against Wright Middle School. Cherokee versus Sherman. 
Toki versus Whitehorse and O'Keefe versus Senate. That is the competition for this morning. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. J.R. Sims, who will be your moderator for the competition. Mr. Sims is an environmental scientist with the Department of Natural Resources with the state of Wisconsin. Please welcome J.R. Sims. At this time, I'd like the uh, contestants to please approach the stage. Well, Mr. Ragland actually had uh, the foresight to introduce all of the participants on stage today, so there's only one thing left for me to say, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. <laughs> Jaden Medford, and I, I'm from Bad Rock, obviously, and I'm in seventh grade. My name is Taji Jackson, and I'm in eighth grade. Badger Rock Middle School. My name's, Adi my name's Addison Shan Schatz. Oh, um, my name's Addison Shan Schatz, and I'm in seventh grade. My name's Ellie Tatum, and I'm in sixth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamilton Middle School. Hamilton, are you ready? Badger Rock, are you ready? Yep. Okay. This we have. We got this. <laughs> Judges, are you ready? Yes. This is your first question. What was the name of the first ship? Hamilton. 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 White Lion. That's correct. Wait until the score calls your score, okay? Or wait until the score calls your score. Then you buzz in first. Wait until the referee. Before you answer. This is your second question. The first slave narrative published in North America was based on the life of? Um, Thomas Jefferson. Dang, wrong. That answer is incorrect. Will Hamilton get a Hamilton, would you like to uh, take a shot at answering the question? Would you like to hear the question again? Okay. The first slave narrative published in North America was based on the life of? Hi. The answer we were looking for, Britton Hammond. Here is your next question. Luanda is located in the area of Africa that sold the most slaves. West Central Africa. That answer is correct. Your next question. By 1865, more black students had been admitted to this Oberlin College. That answer is correct. <laughs> the question was, by 1865, more black students had been admitted to this college than any other colleges and universities combined. Here is your next question. In 1850, this law was passed with the support of Henry Clay and Daniel Webster that would force northern states to help return runaway slaves. The Fugitive Slave Act. Judges. Uh, 
That is correct. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. Who was John Brown? He led the raid on Harper's Ferry. That answer is correct. Very tight race. Scores 10 to 15. Here is your next question. Founded in Pulaski. The Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan. That answer is correct. The score is 20 to 10. Hamilton, there are three questions left. It is still anybody's match. Here is your next question. Stagecoach Mary Fields and Deadwood Dick Na Um, Western Ter I mean, yeah, Western Territory. Judges. Clarify. Could you um, expound? Repeat the answer and clarify. Um, the Western Frontier, like. That is correct. That answer is correct. The Western Frontier. Here's your next question. What? is Plessy v. Ferguson. Badger Rock, would you like an opportunity to answer the question? The question is, what is Plessy v. Ferguson? The answer we were looking for, Plessy v. Ferguson is the Supreme Court case about a Louisiana law regarding the railway companies setting the president for separate but equal. Here is your next question. When he took office in 1897, he found himself to be the last African American in Congress. Anthony Burns. Could you repeat your answer, please? Anthony Burns. That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, would you like a chance at, the, at answering the question? Okay. Would you like to hear the question um, again? Uh, sure. When he took office in 1897, he found himself to be the last African American in Congress. Hamilton, do you have an answer? No. The answer we were looking for, George H. White. And with a score of 25 to 10, that concludes round 1A. Good job, Hamilton. My name, my name is Jaden Wynn. I go to James C. Wright Middle School. I'm in eighth grade. I'm Micah Asplund. I'm in eighth grade as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Wright Middle School. I'm Kat Custer. I'm in seventh grade. I'm Anthony Waters, and I'm in sixth grade. Jefferson Middle School. Jefferson, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Right, are you ready? No. This is your first question. Most 
of Africans shipped to the New World were captured by whom? African elites? That answer is correct. Your next question. This devotional poem by Jupiter Hammon. An evening thought. That answer is correct. This devotional poem by Jupiter Hammond displayed black religios religiosity, it's easy for me to say, and was first published in 1760 in Evening Thought. Here is your next question. What product, with Rhode Island as a lead-in exporter? Rum. That answer is correct. What product from Rhode Island as a leading exporter was exchanged for slaves in America? And the answer was rum. Here is your next question. What is the Amistad? Jefferson. The Amistad was a ship that was captured by a freed slave on his way to freedom. Oh, I know repeat, repeat your answer clearly into the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. The Amistad was a ship that carried one of the escaped slaves to freedom. That answer is incorrect. The question is, what is the Amistad? Right, would you like a chance to answer the question? No, we're fine. The answer we were looking for, a ship in which a slave mutiny occurred. Here's your next question. What do Frederick Jenkins and Thomas Sims? They were both arrested under the fugitive slave law, but Thomas Jenkins escaped and Sims did not. That answer is correct. With a score of right 20 and Jefferson zero, we have five questions left. It is still anybody's match. Here is your next question. As the Civil War began, the Lincoln administration and state governors made it clear. Black soldiers. That answer is correct. The question was, as the Civil War began, the Lincoln administration and state governors made it clear that they would not welcome what in their armies? And the answer, black soldiers. Here is your next question. What are Fisk, Morehouse, Howard, and Hampton? They were educational black college, and educational as in non-religious. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. This group emerged as the first national labor movement in the United States history. The Knights of Labor. That answer is correct. The question was, this group emerged as the first national labor movement in U.S. history with more than 700,000 members across the country? And the answer, the Knights of Labor. Here is your next question. Justice John Marshall Harlan was the lone dissenter in this important 1896 Supreme Court case. Plessy versus Ferguson. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. Who was James Weldon Johnson? Hi. 
the answer we were looking for, the first black executive secretary of the NAACP. And with that, questions in round 1B have been exhausted. Thank you. My name is Xavier Diaz and I'm in seventh grade. My name is Awa Fati and I'm in seventh grade. Sherman Middle School. <laughs> My name is Rochelle Swerdy and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Jay Rice and I'm in eighth grade. Cherokee Middle School. Cherokee, are you ready? Yes. Sherman, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready, Sherman? <laughs> okay. This is your first question. Almost one half of all slaves. Sherman. Uh, Brazil. See. Brazil. That answer is correct. The question was, almost one half of all slaves sent to the New World ended up in which present day country? Brazil. Here is your next question. The voice of African Americans in the American Revolution was reflected by the poem America by what author? The answer we were looking for, Phyllis Wheatley. Here's your next question. What year did the United States ban external trading of slaves? 1807. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. Although he publicly kept a black slave wife, this man was successfully elected vice president of the United States in 1836. Woodrow Wilson. That answer is incorrect. Cherokee, would you like to try? You will not be penalized for trying. The answer we were looking for, Richard Johnson. Here is your next question. Who? was Martin Delaney. Um, he wrote a book saying that Africans should um, go back to their country and they, um, they, were, they should be shipped back to Africa. That answer is correct. With a score of 15 to zero, Sherman 15, Cherokee zero, there are still five questions left. It is anybody's contest. Here is your next question. This man was the commander of Union Hill Fort Monroe during the start of the Civil War. Benjamin F. Butler. That answer is correct. <laughs> Here is your next question. On May 3rd, 1866, General Stoneman declared martial law to help keep the peace in what city? Memphis. 
that answer is correct. Three questions remain. It is still anybody's contest. Here is your next question. George Washington Carver used his position as a Tuskegee Institute. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. In 1896, the National Freedom of Afro-American Women and the National League of Colored Women combined to form what group? Point of order, point of order. Please reread re -read the question, Mr. Moderator, please. In 1896, the National Federation of Afro-American Women and the National League of Colored Women combined to form what group? The National Association of Colored Women. That answer is correct. This is the final question. This trio created songs that were among Jubilee singers. That answer is incorrect. Judges, do you need to confer? OK. The question is, uh, for Cherokee, this trio created songs that were among the popular songs in the early 20th century and also created two all-black musicals. Who is this trio? No? The answer we were looking for, Johnson, Johnson, and Cole. With a score of Sherman 30 and Cherokee 5, your winner is Sherman. My name is Ajaya, and I'm in the eighth grade. My name is Trevana, and I'm in the eighth grade. Toki Middle School. My name is Shambrielle Evans, and I'm in eighth grade. <laughs> My name is Evelyn, and I'm in eighth grade. White Horse Middle School. <laughs> Toki, are you ready? White Horse, are you ready? This is your first question. Why were the first Africans brought to the New World? Indentured servants. Speak clearly into the mic, please, and repeat your answer. Indentured servants. Judges. That's incorrect. I'm sorry, that is an incorrect answer. Toki, why were the first Africans brought to the New World? They were brought to the New, York, New World because of European exploration. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. The Boston Massacre led to this. Crispit. Crispus Attics. That answer is correct. <laughs> the Boston Massacre led to this man being killed, Crispus Atticus. Here is your next question. This future president declared blacks as fellow citizens, and African Americans use this as proof of equal rights. Who, certainly. This future president declared blacks as fellow citizens, and African Americans use this as proof of equal rights. Who is this president? John F. Kennedy. That answer is incorrect. Toki, this future president declared blacks as fellow citizens and African Americans used this as proof of equal rights. Who is that president? Thomas 
Thomas Jefferson? That answer is incorrect. The answer we were looking for, Andrew Jackson. Here is your next question. He was the first African American to receive a medical degree. James McCooney Smith. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. What was Uncle Tom's cabin? It was a, it was a, a mo it was a story about black men raping white women. Judges. That is incorrect. Toki, what was Uncle Tom's cabin? No answer? What was Uncle Tom's cabin? It was a book. Mr. Moderator, please read the complete answer. Pub published in 1852 about slavery. Halfway through the competition with a score of Toki 10 and White Horse 5. We still have five questions left in this round. It is anybody's competition here is your next question. On November 7th, 1861, Confederate planters fled the Sea Islands of South Carolina, which led to this rehearsal for reconstruction. Port Royal Experiment. That answer is correct. Here's your next question. This amendment gives all people equal protection under the law. I would say the 14th Amendment. I would say that is correct. <laughs> Here is your next question. Who was Booker T. Washington? No answer. The answer we were looking for, Booker T. Washington was the first leader of this African-American normal school to teach educators. That's what we were looking for. Here's your next question. Despite its accomplished membership in 31 years, what group only published 22 papers and 31 articles? The answer we were looking for, the American Negro Academy. Here is the final question of the round. He published collections of his short stories, but didn't make enough money as a writer and returned to a job as a legal stenographer. What was his name? Can you repeat the question, please? I can. He published collections of his short stories, but didn't make enough money as a writer, and so returned to a job as a legal stenographer. What's his name? The answer we were looking for, Charles Chestnut. With a score of Toki 20 and White Horse 5, this round is completed. My name is Elijah and I'm in seventh grade. 
My name is Ben Alexander, and I'm in seventh grade. Ladies and gentlemen, O'Keefe Middle School. Brian Siegler, sixth grade. Test your buzzer and then say your name. My name is Samantha Neeson, and I'm from the sixth grade. Senate Middle School. Senator, are you ready? Okay, O'Keefe, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Here is your first question. Who was Juan Gerardo? The first African-American conquistador to come to the U.S. Judges. That answer is correct. That answer is correct. <laughs> Senate is on the board and off to an early lead. Here is your next question. Although often overlooked, African Americans were major contributors to this group during the American Revolution. The U.S. Army. Clarify your answer. The. The U.S. Army. <laughs> that answer is incorrect. Although, uh, Senate. Oh, hold on. I'll read the question for you again. Although. Often overlooked, African Americans were major contributors to this group during the American Revolution. The Continental Army? That answer is correct. Okay. Here is your next question. Sierra Leone and Liberia were destinations when this group worked American Colonization Society? That answer is correct. The question was, Sierra Leone and Liberia were destinations when this group worked to transport free African Americans to Africa, American Colonization Society. Here is your next question. Point of order, please silence your phones, please. Here is your next question. Somebody just got chastised by the judges. <laughs> wow. Here's your next question. In what city did the Anti-Slavery Society build a meeting hall where abolitionists could meet safely? Philadelphia. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. This Philadelphia school allowed African American students to. Oberlin College. That answer is incorrect. The question is this Philadelphia school allowed African American students to learn about vocational skills like teaching, printing, carpentry, and others. What is the name of this school? The Institute for Colored Youth? That answer is correct. The score stands at Senate 25 and O'Keefe 0. There are five questions left. Here is your next question. This place was the first to end slavery in the United District of Columbia. That answer is correct. Your next question. 
On March 1st, 1869, Nevada became the first state to approve what? Fifteenth Amendment. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. Frank Grant, John W. Bud Fowler, and Moses Fleetwood Walker were earlier African-American pioneers in what sport? Baseball. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. Editorials by Alexander Manley in this city caused election riots to force black citizens out of the city. Boston. That answer is incorrect. Editorials by Alexander Manley in this city caused election riots to force black citizens out of the city. Senate. The answer we were looking for, Wilmington, North Carolina. This is your final question of the round. Who was Paul Lawrence Dunbar? An inspiration to many poets in the Harlem Renaissance. Judges. Repeat your answer again. An inspiration to many poets in the Harlem Renaissance. No. Sorry, that answer is incorrect. O'Keefe, who was it? Paul Lawrence Dunbar? An author in the Harlem Renaissance? That answer is incorrect. The answer we were looking for, Paul Lawrence Dunbar was the first African American to manage to support himself successfully solely through his writings. With a score of Senate 40 and O'Keefe 0, that concludes round 1E. My name is Ajaya, and I am in the eighth grade. My name is Shravana, and I'm in the eighth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, Toki Middle School. My name is Josh Porter, and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Geta Daff, and I'm in sixth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning and defending champions from 2016, Black Hawk Middle School. Toki, are you ready? Yeah. The Black Hawk, are you ready? Yes. This is your first question. Due to a shortage of factory workers during this major event, African Americans started the Great Migration. Due to a sh shortage of factory workers during this major event, African Americans started the Great Migration. The answer we were looking for, World War I. Here's your next question. What does NAACP stand for? Time. The answer we were looking for, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Here is your next question. Who was Madam C.J. Walker? It's 
times. Um, Madam C.J. Walker is um, a woman who is a billionaire and uh, she made hair products. Judges. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. What is the National Urban League? Teaching African Americans urban languages. Repeat your question. Repeat your answer, please. Speak clearly in the mic, please. Teaching African Americans urban languages. That answer is incorrect. Blackhawk, what is the National Urban League? It was a group. Do I have to press the button? Right into the mic. No, leave the button alone. It was a group that helped. African Americans adjust to living in an urban centers. Judges. Repeat the question one more time, please. Repeat the question? No, the answer. It was a group that helped African Americans adjust to living in urban centers. Yes, that answer is correct. Here is your next question. The Negro Yearbook was published in what year to celebrate black accomplishments? Eighteen sixty-six. That answer is incorrect. Blackhawk, the Negro Yearbook was published in what year to celebrate black accomplishments? Hi. The answer we were looking for, nineteen thirteen. Halfway through the round, both teams have popped the box, and so no one is taking an early lead. We have five questions left. Here is your next question. Both the KKK and the NAACP were re-energized in their beliefs because of the popularity of this film. Birth of a Nation. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. On July 10th, 1917, protesters marched down Fifth Avenue in New York in response to the intense rioting caused by a drive-by shooting in this city. East St. Louis. That answer is correct. The score with five minutes left and three questions left is Black Hawk 10, Toki 10. Here is your next question. In 1919, riots in Charleston, Longview, Chicago, Omaha, Elaine, Washington, D.C., Summer. Red Summer. That answer is correct. And over a dozen other cities, um, that became known as Red Summer, those riots in all of those cities. Here's your next question. Who was Marcus Garvey? Who was, Mark, who was Marcus Mosea Garvey? Garvey? He was in charge of the Jewett. Please repeat your answer. Speak a little slower, okay? He was in charge of the Jewett. In charge of the? In charge of the? Jewett. Jesuit? 
Jesuit. That answer is incorrect. Uh, Toki, who was Marcus Mosea Garvey? No, no, no response. Uh, Marcus Garvey initiated, was a man who initiated a movement to have African Americans willingly move to Africa. Here is the final question of the round. This was the country's first black owned record label. Black Swan Records. That answer is correct. With all questions exhausted and a score of Black Hawk 20 and Toki 10, the round has concluded. Um, my name is Ellie Tatum and I'm in sixth grade. My name is Addison Shan Schatz and I am in seventh grade. Hamilton Middle School. My name is Jaden Wynn. I go to James C. Wright Middle School. I'm in eighth grade. My name is Micah Asplund. I go to, or I'm, I'm in eighth grade. Wright Middle School. Wright, are you ready? Hamilton, are you ready? This is your first question. His magazine, The Messenger, was called by the Department of Justice to be the most able and the most dangerous of all the Negro publications. Who is he? John Hope Franklin. That answer is incorrect. His magazine, The Messenger, was called by the Department of Justice to be the most able and the most dangerous of all the Negro publications. Who is he? Right? No. The answer we were looking for, Asa Philip Randolph. Here's your next question. Who was Oscar de Priest? He was the first African in the held a seat in Congress. Judges. That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, who was Oscar de Priest? Okay. Um he was the first African American um, um, in Congress f for 28 years. After. Judges. That answer is correct. Uh, we, the, Wright got the right answer. We need to correct ourselves on that. Wright got the right answer. Okay. Um, after confer after uh, consulting with uh, the judges and the scorekeeper, we have decided to throw that question out. It is our error. We will extend the the uh, the questions by one. Right, you ready? Hamilton, you ready? Here is your next question. A New York City Council member and publisher of the People's Voice, he was elected to Congress from Harlem in 1944. Who is he? Time. The answer we were looking for Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Here is your next question. This famous 1931 case involved nine young African American. Scott's Borough Boys versus. Um
Congress? Could you repeat your answer? Scottsboro, Scottsboro Boys versus Congress. Yeah. Judges. That is correct. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. The home of many African American. Apollo Theater. That answer is correct. The question was the home of many African American musicians in Harlem. Its amateur night also launched the career of Ella Fitzgerald, Apollo Theater. Here is your next question. Who was Richard Wright? He was an author, and he wrote short stories, I think. Judges. That answer is incorrect. Sorry, that answer is incorrect. Right. Who was Richard Wright? Richard Wright was the author of the book Native Son. That is the answer we were looking for. With a score of five to five, there are five questions left. Here is your next question. Promoters and journalists promote. Joe Lewis. That answer is correct. The question was, promoters and journalists promoted the white versus black, American versus German components of the 1938 match between Max Smelling and Joe Lewis. Here is your next question. Who was Jesse Owens? Jesse, Owen, oh, Jesse Owens competed in the Olympics against Hitler's say. Yeah. Judges. That's correct. That answer is correct. There are three questions left. The score is 15 to 5. Here's your next question. His two most famous works were? Richard Wright. That answer is correct. The question was, his two most famous works were Book of the Month Club selections, making him the first black author to have a work selected for that. Richard Wright. Here is your next question. Who founded Bethune-Cookman College? Mary McLeod Bethune. That answer is correct. Here is your final question. Europeans destroyed this group of people by forcing them into... Native Americans. That answer is correct. With a score of Hamilton 20 and Wright 15, that concludes this round. Oh, sorry, with a score of right 20 and Hamilton 15, that concludes this round. My name is Awa Fati. I'm in seventh grade. My name is Xavier Diaz, and I'm in seventh grade. Sherman Middle School. Brian Siegler, sixth grade. Samantha Neeson, sixth grade. Senate Middle School. <laughs> Senate, are you ready? Uh -huh. Sherman, are you ready? Yes. Here is your first question.
This ended discrimination in the unemployment of workers in defense industries or government because of race, creed, color, or national origin. Fourteenth Amendment. That is incorrect. Can you repeat the question? I can. This ended discrimination in the employment of workers in defense industries or government because of race, creed, color, or national origin. Voting Rights Act of 1966. That is incorrect. The answer we were looking for, Executive Order 8802. Here is your next question. The combination of fighting fas fascism abroad and racism at home during World War II. Sure. Double V. That answer is correct. The, the question was the combination of fighting fascism abroad and racism at home during World War II was known as what campaign? Double V. Here is your next question. Who were Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Benjamin O. Davis Jr.? Um, they were leaders in the African American community during the Civil War, I mean, war, and um, uh, they worked to get back African American rights. That answer is incorrect. Senate, the question is, who were Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Benjamin O. Davis Jr.? Humans. <laughs> that is not the answer we were looking for. <laughs> the answer we were looking for, they were both generals in the United States military. Here is your next question. What was the nickname for the Tuskegee Airmen? Red Tails. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. This man traveled on a goodwill tour of Africa with Vice President Richard Nixon. John F. Kennedy appointed him as a special U.S. ambassador. He was also the first African American to make the Forbes 400 list of richest Americans, and he received numerous recognitions for his contributions to African American culture. What was his name? James Johnson Williams? That answer is incorrect. Senate, this man traveled on a goodwill tour of Africa with Vice President Richard Nixon. John F. Kennedy appointed him as a special U.S. ambassador. He was the first African American to make the Forbes 400 list of richest Americans, and he received numerous recognitions for his contributions to African American culture. What is his name? We don't have an answer. The answer we were looking for, John H. Johnson. With a score of Sherman 10 and Senate 0, we still have five questions. It is still anybody's contest. Here is your next question. He is the author of Slavery to Freedom, A History of African Americans. Senator. 
Richard Wright? That answer is incorrect. Sherman, uh, he is the author of Slavery to Freedom, A History of African Americans. What is his name? James Weldon Johnson. That answer is incorrect. The answer is John Hope Franklin. Here's your next question. The 1947 Rookie of the Year and 1940... Sure. Jackie Robinson. That answer is incorrect. Baseball. That answer is correct. <laughs> the question, the question was, the 1947 Rookie of the Year and 1949 Most Valuable Player, Jackie Robinson, broke the color line in what sport? Baseball. Here is your next question. It is still anybody's contest. The question, President Truman used a series of what in order to start? Sure. Executive orders. That answer is correct. Uh, the question was, President Truman used a series of what in order to start dismantling racial discrimination? And the answer was executive orders. There are two questions left. It is still anybody's contest. Here's your question. A picture of this man being adorned by white female fans in Life magazine was unprecedented and broke down a barrier in the media. Who was this man? Emmett Till. That answer is incorrect. Sherman. A picture of this man being adored by white female fans in Life magazine was unprecedented and broke down a barrier in this media. Who was this man? Joe Lewis. That answer is incorrect. The answer, the correct answer is Billy Eckstein. Here is your next question. Court cases from Virginia, Delaware, Kansas, South Carolina. Brown versus Board of Education. That answer is correct. The question, the question was court cases from Virginia, Delaware, Kansas, South Carolina, and Washington, D.C. were combined into this one case that was decided by the Earl Warren-led Supreme Court on May 17, 1954, Brown v. Board of Education, with a score of Sherman 15 and Senate 10. That concludes round number two. I would like to bring everybody's attention to the fact that this is the semifinal round. So, uh, guys, you know what to do. I'll give you a cue when we get a chance. Guys, you know what to do. I'll give you a cue when it's time. Um, okay, young lady, press your buzzer. Say your name and your grade. My name is Geta Daff, and I'm in sixth grade. Yes, sir. My name is Josh Porter, and I'm in eighth grade. Your linear and true defending champions, Black Hawk Middle School. Go ahead, young man. My name is Jaden Wynn, and I, I'm in this eighth grade. I'm Micah Asplund, I'm in eighth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, right, middle school. This is your first question. Although this group publicly distanced itself. The White Citizens Council. That answer is correct. 
the question was, although this group publicly distanced itself from the KKK and its unrestricted violent tactics, they had also had a lot of success in preventing desegregation, White Citizens Council. Here is your next question. Mamie Bradley had an open casket funeral. Emmett Till. That answer is correct. The question was, Mamie Bradley had an open casket funeral for her son, and when pictures of this young man uh, were, appeared on the cover of Jet Magazine, it made national headlines, Emmett Till. Here's your next question. On December 5th, 1955, right. Rosa Parks. That answer is correct. Here is the question. On December 5th, 1955, a bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama started as a result of the arrest of this woman, Rosa Parks. Here is your next question. His appearance on the cover of Time... James Baldwin. That answer is correct. The question was, his appearance on the cover of Time magazine on May 17, 1963, cemented his status as the civil rights movement's first literary celebrity, James Baldwin. Here is your next question. After receiving the key to the city of... Bill Russell. That answer is correct. <laughs> here, is the, uh, here is the question. After receiving the key to the city of Marion, Indiana, a restaurant refused to serve this athlete, so he woke the mayor at his home and returned the key. Bill Russell. Here is your next question. The score is 20 to 5 with five questions remaining. It is still anybody's contest. Here is your next question. Following these during the summer of night. Freedom Reds. That answer is correct. The question was, following these during the summer of 1961, the Interstate Commerce Commission finally endorsed laws against bus segregation, freedom rides. Here is your next question. On February 1st, 1960, four students sat down at a... Lunch counter sit-ins. Repeat your answer, please. Lunch counter sit-ins. That answer is incorrect. Black Hawk, here is the question. On February 1st, 1960, four students sat down at a, Woolworth, at a Woolworths for the first time. In what city did this occur? On February 1st, 1960, four students sat down at a Woolworths for the first time. In what city did this occur? The answer, Greensboro, North Carolina. Here's your next question. This play became a film in... Arisen in the Sun. That answer is correct. The question was, this play became a film in 1961 starring Sidney Poitier and was perhaps the first attempt to realistically portray a black lower middle class family. A Raisin in the Sun. Here is your next question. And second to last question. A class action lawsuit filed by this group forced the federal courts to rule on the constitutionality of bus segregation. Montgomery Improvement Association. That answer is correct. With five minutes left in this round and one question left in this round, the score is Black Hawk 20 and Wright 20. Here is the final question 
in regulation. The 101st Airborne Division Tuskegee Airmen? That answer is incorrect. Right, this is the question. The 101st Airborne Division and the Arkansas National Guard were called in to keep control when Central High School in this city was integrated. Little Rock. That answer is correct. With all questions exhausted, Black Hawk 20, Wright Middle School 25 to end the semifinal round 3A. My name is Ellie Tatum and I'm in sixth grade. My name is Addison Shan Schatz and I'm in seventh grade. Hamilton Middle School. My name is Xavier Diaz and I'm in seventh grade. Young lady? Yeah. My name is Owl Fati and I'm in seventh grade. Sherman Middle School. Here is your first question. Even though President John F. Kennedy had already sent a civil rights bill to Congress, civil rights groups wanted to keep pressure on Congress by organizing what? The answer we were looking for, the March on Washington. Here is your next question. Due to his epic live performances, he was known as the hardest working man in show business. John Brown? That answer is incorrect. Sherman. Due to his epic live performances, he was known as the hardest working man in show business. The answer we were looking for is James Brown, the godfather of soul, soul brother number one. He's universally known as soul brother number one. <laughs> He's soul brother number one in Asia. He's soul brother number one in Cleveland. <laughs> He's universally known as soul brother number one. Point of order, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> okay. Here is your next question. He was the first to use the history of music to interpret the ways blacks had adapted to white society and culture. What is his name? Duke Ellington. That answer is incorrect. Can you repeat the question? Sherman, he was the first to use the history of music to interpret the ways blacks had adapted to white society and culture. What is his name? Hi. The answer we were looking for is Leroy Jones. Here is your next question. Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner, Schwerner were killed in Mississippi during this time. Like 
Can you repeat it? Sure. Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner were killed in Mississippi during this time. Mississippi plan? That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, would you like a shot at the question? The question is, Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner were killed in Mississippi during this time. World War I? That is incorrect. The answer we were looking for was Freedom Summer. Here is your next question. Who was Thurgood Marshall? Who was Thurgood Marshall? Who was Thurgood Marshall? The answer we were looking for, the first African American appointed to the Supreme Court. With five questions left to go, the score is a blistering zero to zero. It is anybody's contest. Here is your next question. This forbade state and local governments from restricting access to public facilities on the grounds of race, color, religion, or national origin. Can you repeat it? This forbade state and local governments from restricting access to public facilities on the grounds of race, color, religion, or national origin. What, is, what was that? Fifteenth Amendment. That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, this forbade state and local governments from restricting access to public facilities on the grounds of race, color, religion, or national origin. Affirmative action. That answer is incorrect. We were looking for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Here is your next question. What was the Voting Rights Act of 1965? It was an act they created to prevent African Americans to vote. Just clarify your answer a little bit. Be a little more specific. It was an act they created to prevent African Americans from voting for their president. Okay, I want you to clarify it one more time, and this will be the last time that you are allowed to do this. Make your statement. <clears throat> they created this act to restrict African Americans from voting, and in the things they they made African Americans pay tax. I mean, um, polling. No, they made them pay tax to vote. And no, that is not correct. That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, the question, what was the Voting Rights Act of 1965? Hi. The answer we were looking for, basically the exact opposite of what you said, a law prohibiting states from using measures to deny or abridge the rights of any citizen of the United States to vote on account of race or color. You were in the ballpark. Here is your next question. Norman Mailer said this book was, quote, the first thing I ever read which gave me an idea of what it would be like day to day if I'd grown up in Harlem, end quote. What's the name of this book? Roots, a saga of an African-American family. 
repeat mm -hmm. your answer, please. Roots, a Sega of an American family. That answer is incorrect. Hamilton. Man, child in the promised land. That answer is correct. The current score is Hamilton five, Sherman zero, with two questions left. It is anybody's contest. Here is your next question. The founder of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, this former member of the Nation of Islam, was killed on February. Malcolm, Malcolm X. That answer is correct. The question was, the founder of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, this former member of the Nation of Islam, was killed on February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X. Your next question. Governor Ross Barnett traveled to Oxford, Mississippi to prevent this man from enrolling in classes. Who is this man that he wanted to prevent from rolling, enrolling in classes? The answer that we were looking for, James Meredith. With all questions exhausted and a final score of Hamilton 10 and Sherman 0, that concludes round 3B. Your winner, Hamilton. My name is Ellie Tatum, and I'm in sixth grade. My name is Addison Chan Schatz, and I'm in seventh grade. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamilton <laughs> Middle School. My name is Jaden Wynn, and I am in the eighth grade. My name is Micah Asplund, I'm in eighth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, Wright <laughs> Middle School. Well, the time that you have all been waiting for has finally arrived. For those of you sitting in the audience and for those of you watching on TV, ladies and gentlemen, this is the championship round. We will disable the clock for this round and there will be a full 20 questions. Hamilton, are you ready? Wright, are you ready? This is your first question. Working with John Landis, his thriller music video paved... Michael Jackson. That answer is correct. The question was, working with John Landis, his thriller music video paved the way for African Americans to be stars on MTV. Michael Jackson. Here is your next question. A combination of pop, R&B. Right. Prince. That answer is correct. <laughs> the question was, a combination of pop, R&B, funk, he and his band, The Revolution, soared to popularity in the 1980s. Prince. Here is your next question. A former supporter of Dr. King, Jesse Jackson. That answer is correct. The question was, a former supporter of Dr. King, he founded Push out of Chicago in 1971, Jesse Jackson. Here is your next question. He was famous for also producing commercials for Spike Lee. That answer is correct. The question, the question was, he was famous for also producing commercials for Michael Jordan and a music video for Public Enemy, Spike Lee. Here is your next question. 
to gain revenge for perceived racial transgression, Keith Mondello organized a white mob and Yusef Hawkins was killed as a result in this city in 1989. New York City. That answer is correct. Here is your next question. The score is currently right, 20, Hamilton 5. 15 questions left to go, it's anybody's contest. Here is your next question. A witness record. Rodney King. Yeah. That answer is correct. The question was, a witness recorded the March 3rd, 1991 beating of this man by police officers. Here's your next question. A graduate of Holy Cross in Yale. Clarence Thomas. That answer is correct. The question was, a graduate of Holy Cross in Yale, he was nominated for the Supreme Court on July 1st, 1991, Clarence Thomas. Here is your next question. His fame expanded through commercial camp. Michael Jordan. That answer is correct. His fame expanded through commercial campaigns by Nike and Gatorade, Michael Jordan. Here is your next question. In 2001, Colin Powell. That answer is correct. <laughs> Here was the question. In 2001, he was named Secretary of State by President George W. Bush, making him the highest ranking African American in U.S. government history at the time. Colin Powell. The score is right, 40, Hamilton 5, with 12 questions left. It is still anybody's contest. Here is your next question. He was, he was considered such a great athlete that... Carl Lewis. That answer is correct. The question was, he was considered such a great athlete that he was drafted in the NFL and NBA, even though he didn't play football or basketball in college, Carl Lewis. Here is your next question. He first appeared on national TV. Tiger Woods. That answer is correct. He first appeared on national TV at age two, again at age eight, and eventually became the first athlete to earn more than a billion dollars. Tiger Woods. Here is your next question. During the filming of African American Lives, part two, he learned that two of his grand uncles. Tom Joyner? That answer is correct. During the filming of African American Lies Part Two, he learned that two of his grand uncles had been unjustly executed in South Carolina and worked to get them, a, get them posthumously pardoned, Tom Joyner. Here is your next question. This man worked with Malcolm X and succeeded him as the head minister of the Nation of Islam in 1964. Ron Karenga? That answer is incorrect. Hamilton, the question is, this man worked with Malcolm X and succeeded, succeeded him as the head minister of the Nation of Islam in 1964 before breaking away in 1978 to create his own Nation of Islam. Who is this man? The answer we were looking for, Louis Farrakhan. Here is your next question. Texaco Oil Company. Affirmative action. That answer is correct. Yes. 
The question was, Texaco Oil Company paid a total settlement of $140 million for racial discrimination that demonstrated a continued need for what policy in hiring and promotions affirmative action? Here is your next question. In 1998, DNA evidence was shown to show, was used to show Sally Hemings. Repeat your answer, please. Sally Hemings. That answer is correct. The question was, in 1998, DNA evidence was used to show that Thomas Jefferson most likely had children with which of his slaves, Sally Hemings? Here is your next question. This man was the first African American to host his own show on in Tavis Smiley. That answer is correct. The question was, he was the first African American to host his own show on NPR after working as a commentator for BET, PBS, ABC, and CNN, Tavis Smiley. Your next question, Mr. Michael Brown, the head of FEMA. Hurricane Katrina. That answer is correct. The question was, Michael Brown, the head of FEMA, told CNN that the levees of New Orleans did not break during this event, Hurricane Katrina. Here is your next question. Deval Patrick became the second African American governor when he was elected as governor of... 2006 election. That answer is correct. Deval Patrick became the second African American governor when he was elected as governor of Massachusetts in what year? The 2006 election. Here is your next question. States rights in the 10th Amendment and equal protection in the 14th Amendment were the key arguments for each side in this court case involving Loving versus Virginia? That answer is correct. The question was, states' rights in the 10th, in the 10th Amendment and equal protection in the 14th Amendment were the key arguments for each side in this court case involving a Virginia married couple, loving the Virginia. This is the final question of the round. Who was the 44th President of the United States? Barack Obama. That answer is correct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm round of applause for both of these fine competitors? <laughs> With all questions exhausted, no time on the clock. I would like to present to you your winner for 20 and new 2017 AAHCB Citywide Champions Wright Middle School. If I could uh, just take a few more minutes of uh, your time, I really want to thank each and every one of you for taking time to uh, be here today. It's, uh, ple it's so commendable to see the support that is given to uh, our young people. Please give yourselves a round of applause.
And in concert with that, uh, what we endeavor to do is to incentivize your attendance. If you could have it a little bit more quiet. We try to incentivize your attendance. Sometimes that's called a bribe. Um, we give $300 uh, for a piece of party for the most uh, support that is shown for a school and then for $200 for second place and um, $100 for third place. In third place, Blackhawk Middle School. And in second place, Sherman Middle School. And the $300 award goes to Cherokee Middle School. As expressed, we have individual awards and medallions. If the team from Blackhawk Middle School would please come forward. Uh, photographers, where would you like them to gather so that you could take an image and we can still move things forward? Okay. Is this is this a coachless? Uh, is this is this a coachless situation? Stop it. Okay. And while everyone is being adorned with a uh, medallion, I'd like to point out to you that we were able to take a very interesting photo in the hallway uh, because a young man who is now uh, going to be attending uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison seven years ago participated in this, and his sister participated today, uh, which says a heck of a lot about the coaches and the instruction of, of black people. Move to your stage right. And then uh, in second place, Hamilton Middle School. And, it, and if you could move to the right, and that's not a pun, because we would next like to have Wright Middle School come forward and accept their first place award.
and we would like to share the traveling trophy with the champions for this year, Wright Middle School. And if I could, I'd like to uh, pay tribute, recognition, and honor to the chairman of this uh, august occasion, Mr. Derek Smith, who is responsible for everything that you see here today. Please give him a round of applause. At this point, we will conclude our ceremonies. The financial awards will be sent to the schools, uh, and we will provide uh, additional guidance regarding uh, the activity of the winning team uh, as they will journey to uh, New Orleans, or for those who are from Louisiana, Narlands, Louisiana. Uh, and represent uh, the Madison Metropolitan School District and the 100 Black Men of Madison. Please give them again a round of applause. Again, thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Any, uh, any of the other medallions will be sending to the school.